Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. You are listening and watching to Making It with Terry Woolman here, live at NAMM. And we are broadcasting for Intertalk Radio and the NAMM Foundation. Uh, this is our second year doing it, and happy to be back uh, talking to some very interesting artists and also um, companies as well. So we're covering the broad spectrum, but I'm with an artist right now, an, a fellow artist producer, Jessica Dupre. And uh, let me tell you, let me tell them a little bit about you, and then we'll get sure. into our conversation. Uh, Jessica Ann is a world-renowned bassist, producer, songwriter, author, and music entrepreneur. Originally from France, at an early age, he focused relentlessly on becoming a professional musician, producer, and songwriter. After landing his first record deal at 19, entering the world with some of the biggest acts in France, Jessica Ann moved to Southern California to take his career to the next level. Shortly after his arrival, he became a much sought after bassist after which he expanded his skills to include producing, arranging, and songwriting. In the late 80s, he began a longtime collaborative writing partnership with legendary Elton John lyricist Bernie Taupin. There's so much more, but you can go to the website for that. Uh, so just kind of welcome, and it's really nice to meet you and, and a pleasure to have this conversation we're about to have. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. You know, um, you first, came to my attention, so that's how I'm going to start this conversation, with a video that I saw on YouTube that got 10 million views in the first three months, I believe, and it's gone upwards from that point. It's a song called Could I Love You Anymore with artist Renee Dominique and Jason Mirage. And um, it's a really cool song. Um, the, the actual video is just the two of them sitting on a you know, outdoors somewhere, you can tell me where, but like at a little tabletop, looks like, you know, in the south of some place, you know, and um, I'm curious about that collaboration, how it happened, but also what I'm really curious about is all of the things that you're doing marketing-wise, social media-wise that are blowing you up in ways as a producer and songwriter that are really exciting and new. So. Okay, so well, the story behind the video <coughs> begins about a year ago. Uh -huh. And by the way, the video was shot in Singapore. Singapore, there you go. And uh, so it's, I don't know if it's in the south of Singapore. No. <laughs> because I was only there for two days. I was there for three. Okay. So, right. <laughs> so, but what happened about a year ago, I saw a commercial. Um, and it was a Samsung commercial, and I heard this girl's voice that just hit me, and I had no idea who it was. Right. So I decided to figure out who it was, and the girl happened to be in the Philippines. So um, I was working with Jason Mraz and a couple of friends mm -hmm. at the were time. You, were you writing with Jason or producing? Or yeah, we had been working on a variety of tunes. Right. I, I had a hard drive of about 25 Jason Mraz songs mm -hmm. that I was developing and um, and at the time <clears throat> you know I told him hey you know I found this great voice I think we need to pay attention to her and um, at first he was kind of a little bit mm, I don't know <laughs> and all this and he kind of warmed up to it right and within a week we started writing this song with a couple of friends and we reached out to her and it's a long story, but the next thing we know, we went to Asia, he brought her on tour, she got signed with Universal. But, 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 but back that up, we went to Asia. You're making that sound well, like we went well, and got a sandwich. No. Had, <laughs> you actually okay. bought plane tickets to go to Singapore? Jason was leaving to Asia on his tour. Okay. So what happened, Jason, well first, I should back up even more. When, when we checked the girl on YouTube, yeah. She had a hundred million views on her video. Wow. So she had a huge following. Okay. Which is extremely important in this day and age. Of course. So, um, which made us pay attention. 
We figured if 100 million people pay attention, maybe we should. Were, were, were you, in a way, do you just go on um, down the YouTube rabbit hole and fish and see who gets the most views and see if anybody's interesting? Or no, did she just all. came across musically? I was watching read. television okay. and I was attracted to her voice. I had no right. idea who okay. it was. Now, when I went looking deeper, sure. that's when I realized how big she was right. on YouTube. And uh, she had been singing since she was 13. Mm -hmm. And then that's when, you know, for example, Jason Mraz did not care whether she had a bunch of views. We weren't paying attention to this. Right. It, it was, was about, all about, it was the, about music. the music yeah. and the, the art. And uh, right. meanwhile, Universal was paying attention to her. Right. And that's how this picked up. Then when Jason Mraz was leaving on tour to Asia, that's when he decided maybe I should bring her on stage mm -hmm. in Manila, in Singapore, and that's how this whole thing started taking a life. It's pretty exciting. Oh yeah, it was very exciting, especially for her. What were you watching on TV? <laughs> Do you remember? Because you said you were just watching TV during something. Oh, I don't know what the show was. Right, okay. But <laughs> I know this commercial, this Samsung commercial came on twice. Got it, okay. And at the second time, I decided to get up and figure out who right. that was. Yeah. The first time I thought it was cool. The second time I said, I need to figure out who that is. You know, I when I'm watching TV or a, a film, I've got Soundhound by me anytime something, when, when my head tilts for the sound of a voice or a melody to, I, to see who it is. So that's great. If that. I was real high tech, I would have Shazammed it. <laughs> <laughs> but I literally got out of bed, walked back to the living That's room. That's commitment. Yeah. <laughs> that's, she actually moved me out of bed at 11.30 at night. You know, so that's the story right. I always tell. So, um, and basically that's how it happened. And um, we released the video. And I think the first day we had one million views. So is, by the way, that's fantastic. So, and incredible. This, obviously, primarily, that has to do with it being a good song, mm -hmm. arranged and produced well and sung well and, and all that. So, but did it also have to do with that she was getting 100 million, how many, you, you said she was getting millions of views already previously as an artist. Was there, what was your part in that besides, you know, creating a great piece of music? Like, what did you do to turn a video that was out for 24 hours into getting a million views. Jason Mraz had everything to do Great, with it. Great, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> basically, he took her on the road. Mm -hmm. Basically, I followed. He took her on stage. Right. His, Jason's video crew right. took care of the video, chose the location, mm -hmm. shot the video, edited the video, Put out the video, right? And um, and basically, it was a combination of her following, right? And a combination of Jason's following, and all the efforts that we put into it that made it happen. Which and a great song, a great song, which which really started by you getting yourself out of bed at 11:30 at night, there and, was and that paying too. attention, like just really paying attention and good A and R, right? You know, yeah. And, and getting the right people together, the right production, and getting all the right songwriters together. Well, and it's not just two or three songwriters on this song. It, it, there's a few, right? There's quite a few songwriters, and because it was done organically, right? and there were a lot of friends coming in, mm -hmm. members of Jason's band, and a group of people, right? and, um, and everybody who was contributing, um, became a songwriter. You know, I think there's something uh, very important to be said about that, of not being rigid or limited or fear-based in, in your thinking about when you're creating. Mm -hmm. Creating is creating, and for, for your openness to letting it organically grow into this collaborative um, gumbo. That's what ex exactly what it was. Of, of artist and, and artistry, mm -hmm. created something more special. Yeah. Instead of you going, I don't want more than four songwriters on this, or more than two, or... Well, originally, when we wrote the song, there were four writers. Okay. Um, Tolan Shaw, who was a friend of ours from Nashville, right. came and we got together in this cabin in the mountains off Sandy, outside San Diego. Right. 
and he started strumming these chords, mm -hmm. and we put the song together. So there were four songwriters. Right. And then um, Jason came in, and he had the killer chords on that song. Right. And then um, he brought in one of the members of his band who came in and did this outro on the song that is amazing. Yeah. And then my cousin in France reworked some parts of the song. Right. I mean, everybody came in, and I think there's eight songwriters right. on this song. Okay, you know? well, that's how that happens. Yeah. And um, everybody contributed yeah. an amazing amount, but it made a great song. It, right, it is. Yeah. So what are your, um, what's your perspective as uh, a producer and a songwriter, but also as somebody who has a good sense of business? Uh, and I'm saying that because, as well as being a composer for film and television and producing a lot of artists, you've written over 18 base method books, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a teacher and mentor. So, you, but what's your point of view of like, what, what's next technology wise? I mean, you know, every time I blink, the social media people that I work with say, don't do this anymore, do that. You need to be blogging more. Now you need to be blogging less. Now it's it's this. Now it's that. It's Facebook. It's Twitter. It's Instagram. It's YouTube. So, what? Where do you put your attention? And, and because you're an innovator as well, you're not sitting around waiting to see what's next. You're creating what's next. You know, it's ever changing. That's it's so hard to to keep up. Yeah, know? it is. It's ever changing. Um, I think YouTube is very big right now. You do. Um, I wrote a, an article in uh, Music Connection magazine about the whole experience with Renee and uh, Jason Mraz. Um, it's a um... adjust the mic. There it is. Okay. I um, I wrote a whole article, um, you know, in Music Connection magazine about this whole experience that we went through because it took us all by surprise too. You know. Sure. Um, I mean, sometimes everything goes well, all the ducks are lined up and mm -hmm. things go perfectly. And it's the perfect synergy, you know. Um, so YouTube worked well for us. Um, you know, um, Renee has this incredible following on YouTube. I think she's up to 140 million views right now. Say that again. 140 yeah. million followers and views on YouTube. I mean, it's is, completely crazy. Yeah. You know? So she doesn't have that many on Instagram. Oh, she that's interesting have, to yeah, me. Yeah, it's weird. So okay. you, you don't know, you know how it works with right. people. We work with other artists who have 10 million followers on Instagram, right. but not that many on YouTube. Okay. So it's, it's interesting how formats work. Right. You know? Um, so you follow the, the money or the interest or the, the energy? It's not that we follow the money, but in general, people will come, you know, at Jonah, our company, yeah. people will ask us, um, they bring us an, an incredible song sure. and all that, but it's really hard, you know, us as musicians, yeah. we first get attracted to the music, mm -hmm. but if there is no you know, nothing going on as far as a following. It's right. very hard to jump in, right. you know, because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's like you you got to have a train going already, and then we can throw a little bit of fuel in the fire. Right, you don't want to build a train. Exactly. It's <laughs> like otherwise. You want to get on the train. Exactly. Right. We can help when there's already a momentum, sure. you know. Um, our general policy is there's got to be 10 million of something. Okay. You know. Yeah. And... Um, and we figured if we can find an artist that has a hundred million, a hundred million views, we can find you know somebody can have ten million. Right. You know, so um, it's like in the eighties. You know, bring us to you know I used to work for Cargo Records who right. signed uh, Blink One Eighty Two. You know, and our general policy at Cargo was invite us to two shows with five hundred people. You know. Right. And. And, you know, for example, we signed the Young Dubliners. You know, they mm -hmm. had 500 people easily right. at every show. Sure. You know, so that's an example, mm -hmm. you know, back in the old days. You know how it was. Yeah. You got to have a following. Absolutely. How many people can you bring to your show? You know, yeah. how many times have we been asked that question yeah. through our whole career? Exactly. And still. Yeah. You know, even with festivals, I've had festival promoters say, 
great, you're a Billboard top one artist, you know, or top ten artist. Uh, but I'll, I'll have a song out that's number one most added on Billboard, and I still get the same question. How many people you, mm -hmm. do you think are going to come to Florida to see you at right. this festival? You know, and it's kind of humorous, but but I, I suppose why wouldn't the question change? Right. You yeah. know, um, one of the things that um, we have in common uh, from growing up in different parts of the world, uh, but being in the same age mm -hmm. group and coming up on the same music, we were both exposed heavily to um, world music. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly your mom and your dad. Culturally, you come from a mixed cultural family, mm -hmm. um, and you growing up in France, me growing up in Miami, and how, how do you, I know how it has been a deep influence on a lot of things I do in pop music, you know, do you find the same, does that, is that a big part of the, the tapestry of who you are as a musician? Well, absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, and the ability in pop music to understand mm -hmm. Variety of rhythms, right? So right. I feel fortunate to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we're creating pop music and being able to understand Latin music sure. and to understand African music, right? Even when you're playing rock, right? Which right. a lot of people can't do. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, you know, being in Miami, all the music you're exposed to, mm -hmm. as opposed to if you're in Oklahoma, you know, or you know, you know. Pull your microphone. Pull your mic down a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Cool. I keep breaking it. That's okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, I wasn't so aware that it was was influencing. It was going to influence the the sort of the course of my life as an artist. Until I, later. Until right? later. Exactly. But, but it's the smells, the sounds, the flavors of where you grow Absolutely. up. Absolutely. You know that kind of make who you are. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I realize it more now. Yeah, as I've gotten yeah. older and more versatile. Yeah, exactly. As a musician. Yeah. Um, do you, you're based in Southern California, mm -hmm. San Diego area. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, how does that impact your business? Do you, do you feel like it would be better for you to live in Los Angeles or in New York or in Paris or, or does it not matter anymore? It doesn't matter anymore and actually, you know, I moved to San Diego in the early 90s because of Cargo, uh, Cargo Records right. opened, you know, an office in San Diego mm -hmm. and there was a music scene and uh, the owner was a friend of mine and I was able to, uh, you know, tap in this whole scene sure. in San Diego, started with the acoustic music and mm -hmm. um, Jewel right. was, you know, coming up in San Diego. There was all the indie bands mm -hmm. like Rocket from the Crypt and then Blink-182. Mm -hmm. So I was doing more acoustic records. We producing, signed, writing? Yeah, producing. Right. Doing some writing. Right. And then um, Young Dubliners, they were from L.A., but right. um, we signed them. And um, when that was over, I ran my recording studio mm -hmm. out of San Diego, and I was not competing with the multitude of studios right. out of LA, so I was kind of, you know, the big fish in the small town, sure. you know, so right. that was really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I like it better, right? you know. And now with the internet, I'm completely international. Right. I mean, I have people coming from France, Gypsy Kings, I, you mm -hmm. know, all these different artists. Right. You know. Do you travel a lot when you're producing? No, not really, not mm -hmm. that much. You know, I don't have to. And I kind of like to stay home. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> you want to stay home and just pet yeah, the dog exactly. and go? Hey. I don't have a dog, but okay, well, I like to stay home. We need to get you one. <laughs> you know, I call Monette to have a glass of wine. There you go. <laughs> In our last minute of our conversation, is what's up next for you that you're excited about, and where can people find you? Well, we're working. Um, you know, with my team, um, yeah. Michael Natter, who is one of Mraz's big collaborator, mm -hmm. who co-wrote I Won't Give Up, right. you know, and uh, we're writing some new material with Jason, yeah. and um, and uh, that's basically it, and we can be reached at jonahmusicgroup.com, okay. and uh, we're always listening to people. That's the one thing, we're a musician's company, we're listening to everybody, right. you know. Good 10 million views or not. Uh, okay. We're always listening. <laughs> we have a weakness for music. <laughs> right. So 
business is up front, but it, there's still right slightly above it is the art. Absolutely. There you go. Well, yeah. I mean, it speaks to what we both share, which yeah. is passion and you Absolutely. know, following your passion and what yeah. you do. Um, just kind of Dupree, thank you so much for spending this time thank with you. me. You're listening and watching to Making It with Terry Wallman live from NAM on Entertalk Media. Thanks. Thank you.